I haven't logged on Tumblr in a very long time. When I say like a long time, I mean like years. Let me just get off this job app. So the other day I was like, let's log in. But I forgot my password. So I was like, dang, it's been like years. Long story short, I logged in and I was like, oh, there's like a decent amount of messages in here. So let's answer Tumblr questions. So I'm like, I'm sis, my husband has cheated on me with another woman for five months. Then he marries her behind my back. This is her third marriage and she's a lot older than him and I. She knew about me, but is still a little insecure and jealous that my husband of nearly eight years loves me and our children more. I am not happy about him having another wife. Should I divorce him? When I first read this one, I was like, sheesh. When she says like cheating, are we talking like adultery, adultery cheating? Or are we talking about like courting behind back kind of cheating? Because it's like one is like, you know, you get like like stoned, you know? And the other one is like, it's very heartbreaking. There's definitely that betrayal there, but it's still not like, I mean, depending on how he went about it, it's not like technically haram, depending on what he did, right? And depending on their agreement or if they have an agreement. So like questions I have, was there an agreement about polygamy before getting married? Was it discussed? Like what was talked about? So I can't really give any advice about divorce or not divorce because it's like I don't have that information, right? So that's a little like, mm, right? But uh, hypothetically, right? Hypothetically, say it was full on adultery, right? Say he does get the stone. If I were to put myself in that position, I probably wouldn't even be able to look at my husband the same. I would probably vomit at his sight. So every time I saw him, you know, throwing up. So no, like I wouldn't stay with him, right? And in the case of like a second wife, like my husband and I talked about this kind of stuff before we actually got married, talked about it throughout our marriage. So it's very clear what, um, you know, the path he has to take if he wants to have a second wife or what he has to do and how much I have to know in order for him to like proceed, right? And this is something that we agreed on. If you guys had these agreements, he went behind your back and just completely disregarded everything you guys talked about. Again, it's like you want to vomit every time you look at him. Maybe, you know, you got to step out. But then again, it's like, what, eight years, children. It's like, do you want to stay with him? If you do, like, that's completely up to you. If you're, if you want to vomit at the side of him, but you still want to be with him, definitely seek marriage counseling. If you want to vomit every time you see him and you're like, you know what? I don't want to be with him. Then I feel like you got your answer, right? Next question. I've been talking to this guy for about seven years. Every day I cry to Allah because obviously the end goal is to get married, but I just lose hope every day and I feel like maybe it's not meant to be. What do you think it's best? We have had marriage talks as well. Should I move on or what input do you have? I feel like if it's been seven years, right, and marriage is like still in like the talks, like you guys are still in like the talking stage, right, then it's like, Either you guys are friends or he sees you as an option just in case he doesn't have any other options, you know, put you on the back burner. Either way, seven years is a long time to have conversations about marriage and not actually take any steps to getting married. It sounds like, it sounds like you got to go. It sounds like you got to stop conversations because if people don't take action, right? You're not taking action. Then like all this, these conversations, all these words mean nothing. So yes, I would recommend moving on. Assalamu alaikum. I'm from Egypt and I love a man from Canada. I'm a Muslim. He's non-Muslim. We've been talking to each other for a year and a half and I love him so much and he loves me too. He's an amazing man and we talk all the time. We want to get married in the future, but my family's very strict and I think they won't agree. I don't know what to do. I want to travel to meet him, but it's difficult. I don't know what to do. Do you think it's allowed to marry him or no? And what's your advice for us? You know, it's always difficult when you love someone and you know that you can't be with them while they are in the state they're in, basically. In order for a Muslim woman to get married to a man, one of the requirements is that he is a Muslim as well, right? But that doesn't mean like, okay, well, he's not Muslim, so all hope is gone. No, not at all. Never underestimate like the power of dua, right? Like you make dua for something and you sincerely like give that thing up in hopes that Allah would return it to you or give you something better. And when I tell you, right, completely trust Allah in this situation. There was a woman who was with a man and, you know, they're like dating, blah, blah, blah. 
she gets back on her dean and she's like, you know what? I can't be with you anymore. I have to put myself and my dean first and I'm not going to sacrifice my relationship with the law for you, right? Probably one of the hardest things she has ever had to do. Like, that's difficult, right? Giving up something that you love for the sake of a law, that's not easy. It is not easy to do. So years go by, right? Years. And uh, he ended up becoming Muslim. And they end up getting married and been together for a really, really long time. So I know it's a tough situation, but don't feel like you have no options, right? And I know, like I said, that's easier said than done. Giving up something is easier said than done. But if you really want this person, give them dawah, call them to Islam, but you have to leave things up to a lot. Like, you don't want to go travel to meet someone and then marry them without, you know, the blessing of Allah, right? Okay, last one. I'm an 18-year-old Muslim girl, and I've never talked to guys romantically before until recently. My friends have all had experience with boys, and in most conversations, I find that's all they talk about. Is it wrong for me to try to talk to a guy or be interested in starting her, a haram relationship to see what it might turn into? Marriage. Should I stop speaking to guys that way and stay halal until I find someone interested in marriage, or should I keep replying to people to see where it goes? I'm going to be 100% honest, right? At this stage, I would say between 16 to sometimes like 25, when people are having these conversations and like just back-to-back -back conversations with different people like over the internet, social media, or even in person, most of the time, both people know it's not going anywhere, right? People want it for attention. And wanting to be seen or heard and validated isn't wrong in itself like we're humans that's what we like that's what we want that's what we were made for right there's nothing wrong with that but constantly seeking validation with like different people and putting up this like um front and you know, basically like lying to yourself saying oh well this could turn into something knowing dang well it's not right but it feels good to have that type of attention it feels good to be seen and heard and you know be able to include yourself in conversation i don't know Seems like a waste of time. And I'm speaking, I mean, it doesn't seem like a waste of time. I know it's a waste of time because I was 18 once, you know, 29 now, but like I was 17, 18 once in like similar situations where it's like, okay, well, everyone talks to guys or everyone talks to girls. And, um, you know, it's just, I'm telling you, it's a waste of time. It is a waste of time. Anyway, that's all we have for now. But like, what is this? Is this, is this a podcast? I got a purple light, so is this a podcast?